Their day begins with the milking of their animals. At this time of year, the reindeer are milked twice a day, and from the milk they make butter, a cheese called aohul, cream and yogurt. Smoked meat and wild berries complete their diet. The life of the Itzatan has never been easy, but since the arrival of communism, part of their culture, traditions and daily life have been destroyed. The herds of reindeer, which had belonged to them since time immemorial, became state property. Some Satan preferred to kill them rather than see them disappear. They had to answer to a Mongol official who was completely ignorant of their customs and traditions and forced them to comply with very strict rules entirely unsuited to a nomadic lifestyle. Once they have been milked, the reindeer are released and spend the rest of the day grazing in the mountains. This settlement, composed of 12 families and 86 individuals, possesses only 200 reindeer from which they obtain just enough to be able to buy a little flour, salt, tobacco and tea. One thing that strikes you is that the horns of all the reindeer have been cut. To obtain extra income, the Tsetan sell them for around $4 a kilo to the Chinese, who then turn them into a powder which is used as an aphrodisiac. While the reindeer peacefully graze up in the mountains, the families remain inside their tents around the comforting warmth of the fire. And that, more or less, is their day. Gombo is the chief of the clan. He was born 55 years ago in the Russian taiga, but when he was six years old, his parents crossed the border and settled in Mongolia. He is married to Sendeli, who is 50, and together they have had eight children, of which only four survive. Their eldest daughter has just had a baby, whose father is a Dahat. This is unusual among the Tsatan, but in these desperate times, they must seek to escape poverty, whatever way they can. Until just a few years ago, the women only married men from other clans, but of their same ethnic group. But as they now number just 200, the Tsatan have began to suffer from inbreeding, causing malformations and illnesses. The Mongolian government accuses them of sexual relations between cousins, brothers and sisters, and even parents and their children. Outside, the snow continues to fall and the cold is intense. The youngest chop wood. The fire must not be allowed to go out. The Satan, which literally means the reindeer people, are an ethnic group originating in Russian Siberia, with their own language whose origin lies in Turkey. But with the creation in the 1920s of the People's Republic of Mongolia and the consequent marking of the borders, a group of some 1,000 Tatsan and 6,000 reindeer remain on the Mongolian side. Between chaps and cups of tea around the fire, another day comes to an end. The snowstorm appears to have abated a little, and Dalai Bayar, Gombo's elder brother, takes advantage to go out and indicate to the reindeer that it is time to return to the settlement. When the sun goes down, the taiga will become the domain of the wolves, which systematically attack their herds. The loss of an animal is a real catastrophe for the family economy, which is already down to the bare minimum. Every year, fewer reindeer are born, as the problems of inbreeding also affect them, causing diseases which they transmit to people.
With the return of the animals, the camp again stirs to life. Each family separates its reindeer from the herd in order to milk them and give them salt. Then they prepare dinner, a little milk or yogurt, and if they are lucky, some rice. Tomorrow, the same routine, and if the weather permits, the men will go out hunting while the women and children venture into the forest to gather wild fruits and berries. That is a day in the life of the Tsatan, a tribe which unfortunately would appear to be doomed to extinction. In the Altai range, winter has arrived with even greater force than normal, and at the start of October, a thick layer of snow already covers the mountains. Though we are still in Mongolia, the majority of the people who live in this region are of Kazakh origin. Like the Mongol nomads, they too live in Gurs, but theirs are considerably bigger and much better decorated. Despite the fact the land in which they live is extremely poor, the Kazakhs are prosperous herdsmen, and it's not unusual to find families with 1,000 head of cattle. In this small camp occupied by their Bulgan family, the women begin the day by milking their yaks. But it's very noticeable that there are no men around. Nothing could be more exciting and enjoyable for a Kazakh from the mountains than to go out hunting with his eagle. The season has just begun and for these men today is the first hunting expedition since the start of the spring. And it is a moment they have all been waiting for impatiently. According to an ancient law, the hunting season cannot begin until the first snows of winter arrive, which is normally in the month of October. That way, they give possible prey a respite so they can breed and raise their young during the summer months. But if the snows take longer than normal to arrive, the hunters all go to see the shamans, to pressurize them into making it fall. They cannot conceive of life without hunting, and in fact claim that when the Kazakhs came into the world, they were already eagle hunters. This tradition, which stretches back over 1,000 years, was inherited by the Kazakhs from their Turkish ancestors, and they were already practicing it when they first emerged as an ethnic group back in the 15th century. After riding for three hours, the five horsemen reached the summit of Balkan Atay, which at 3,900 meters is the highest mountain in the area. From here, they can look out over a number of valleys and nearby mountains. During the hunts, they prefer to move around the highest peaks and rarely launch their eagles from further down the slopes. <laughs> <laughs> 